because we're going to now look at solving radical inequalities. Now, when we look to solving uh, rational inequalities, we use the same method, methods that we use to solve rational equations. So, same logic. If we're looking to solve radical inequalities, we're going to use similar techniques that we use to solve radical equations. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to make it an equation. So we're going to switch it to square root of x plus 6, and that's going to be equal to x. So all I've done is made an equation. Now, I would isolate for the radical, but the radical is nicely isolated already, so we just have to square both sides. And we're going to get x plus 6 equals x squared. We have a quadratic, so we're going to get x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. If we factor this, we're going to get x minus 3 and x plus 2 is equal to 0. And so x is going to equal 3 and x is going to equal minus 2 or minus 2. So that's how we would solve it if it was a radical equation. Now it's a rational or it's a radical inequality. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine on our number line, and this is the same thing the way we always solve these inequalities, determine the boundaries, and the boundaries are determined by the solutions here. And um, once we know the boundaries, then we can determine where the inequality lies. So let's put these values on our number line first. So we're going to have, let's put 0 in the middle here, and we'll go 1, 2, 3, and we're going to be at 1 minus 2. And this is an equation equal to, so equal to up here tells us that the points are going to be closed dots. So we're going to put a closed dot on two, negative 2, and we're going to put a closed dot on 3, and these are going to be our boundary lines. But for a radical inequality, there's one thing that we have to keep in mind here, and that is the domain of this function. So the domain of this function is determined by the discriminant, or what's underneath the radical, in our original inequality. So the domain tells us that x plus 6 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Remember, we can't have a negative value under the inequality, or under the, under the radical. So that tells us that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 6. So on our number line, way down here, if we extend our number line, we actually now have a number line that stops. It doesn't go on forever. It goes only to negative 6. And that's another boundary. So now once we have these uh, radical inequalities and we have our boundaries established, now we have to test points. So we need to test points that lie in between these boundary points. So we're going to test values that lie in between here, in between here, and in between here. Now, when we're testing them again, we can choose whatever number we like as long as it falls within that boundary point. And the other thing we want to do is to make sure that we're choosing numbers that make the math easy. There's no point in choosing a number that's going to make the math difficult. So let's change the point between negative 6 and negative 2. So it doesn't really matter what we're going to choose here, but let's look at our, our radical. We're trying to choose a value up here that gives us a perfect square. That would be best if we could choose a number that gives us a perfect square between negative 6 and negative 2. So if we choose, uh, let's choose negative 5. Because if we choose negative 5, then, then you can get an equation that's easy to solve. So we're just going to choose negative 5. 
So let's pick, put negative five in here. So we're going to have, we're going to check x equals negative five. Square root of negative five plus six greater than or equal to negative five. So the square root of negative five plus six is square root of one greater than or equal to negative five. So is one greater than or equal to negative five? Definitely is. So between negative six and negative two, that's included. So that's a true statement. So let's check a number between negative two and zero. And again, we'll look back to our radical and see if we can pick a number that makes the math easy, meaning makes it a perfect square. So if we pick the number well, between zero and negative two and zero, well, let's pick, uh, let's pick, well, we're not actually going to be able to pick one that makes the math easy, so let's just pick zero. We're not going to get a perfect square. So let's pick zero. So when we put zero in there, we're going to get the square root of six. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Well, is the square root of six, we don't know what the square root of six is, but we know it's going to be a positive number. So it's going to be positive. Is that greater than or equal to zero? It definitely is, so we want to have those values all in between here. And now we're going to check x equals, now 6 is the number and we want to make it a perfect square. Let's check x equals 10. And if we check x equals 10, we're going to have the square root of 10 plus 6 greater than or equal to 10. So the square root of 10 plus 6 is 16 square rooted. Is that greater than or equal to 10? Well, is 4 greater than or equal to 10? Definitely is not. So this is a false statement. So we're not going to include those values. And so our inequality, solution to the inequality, is just going to be between, be between negative 6, which is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. There's our solution. So that's how we're going to solve radical inequalities.